do not seek outside yourself. Man is his own star, and the soul that can render an honest and a perfect man. A man's all light, all influence, all fate. Nothing to him falls early or too late. Our acts, our angels are, or good or ill. Our fatal shadows that walk by us still. As the bear in lonely rocks, suckling with the she-wolf's teeth, wintered with the hawk and fox. Power and speed, the hands and feet. On January 4, 2012, users browsing 4chan's X board were greeted with a mysterious image file name final.jpg. Unlike much else really seen on that board, it displayed the following message in simple white on black font. Hello, we are looking for highly intelligent individuals. To find them, we have devised a test. There is a message hidden in this image. Find it, and it will lead you on the road to finding us. We look forward to meeting the few that will make it all the way through. Good luck, 3301. Solvers were quick to try different methods to find the hidden image. A common use was to initially open the image file into a text editing application which allows users to read a dump of the bytes in the image. An unusual text was appended at the end of the file. Tiberius Claudius Caesar says, followed by what was quickly found to be a Caesar cipher because of the repeated characters, hence the reference. Deciphering it resulted in a URL which led to an image of a duck and a written clue that solvers soon realized referenced the program OutGuess had to be used, hence the words guess and out. In its simplest form, OutGuess is a steganography program designed to hide messages within images. Opening final.jpg in OutGuess led to a message that led to a subreddit with, amongst other things, two image posts, one called Welcome and one called Problems. Each image contained an outguess message, welcomes was the statement that all future messages would be signed with a cryptographic key, and the message in problems read, The key has always been right in front of your eyes. This isn't the quest for the holy grail. Stop making it more difficult than it is. Good luck, 3301. The Cicada 3301 treasure hunts would continue for another two years and then fade. Though I'd left you the source if you want to check for yourself the unsolved pages of the Liber Primus, no known solvers ever surfaced, fakes polluted the internet, and most of us who heard it, if we heard it at all, moved on to other adventures. Final post, 2016, read, quote, Hello, the path lies empty, Epiphany seeks the devoted. Libra Primus is the way, its words are the map, their meaning is the road, and their numbers are the direction. Seek and you will be found. Good luck, 3301. Beware false paths. This video is not about Cicada 3301, it is about the call to adventure from what is called the monomyth, the one story. But it might be worth mentioning, if you haven't already noticed, Cicada 3301's Liber Primus means first book. Before we accept the call to take the journey to understand the call, I want to share a koan, what Westerners might call a parable, from the pages of the Liber Primus that have been solved. Quote, Man decided to go and study with a master. He went to the door of the master. Who are you who wishes to study here? Asked the master. The student told the master his name. That is not who you are, that is only what you are called. Who are you who wishes to study here? He asked again. The man thought for a moment and replied, I am a professor. That is what you do, not who you are, replied the master. Who are you who wishes to study here? Confused, the man thought some more. Finally, he answered, I am a human being. That is only your species, not who you are. Who are you? Who wishes to study here? Asked the master again. After a moment of thought, the professor replied, I am a consciousness inhabiting an arbitrary body. That is merely what you are, not who you are. Who are you who wishes to study here? The man was getting irritated. I am, he started, but he could not think of anything else to say, so he trailed off. After a long pause, the master replied, then you are welcome to come study.
Quote, Ralph Waldo Emerson, who went by his middle name Waldo, was an American essayist, lecturer, philosopher, abolitionist, and poet who led the transcendentalist movement of the mid-19th century, so 1800s, Abe Lincoln, Civil War. He was seen as a champion of individualism and critical thinking, as well as a prescient critic of the countervailing pressures of society and conformity. Friedrich Nietzsche thought he was the most gifted of the Americans, and Walt Whitman called him his master. Transcendentalism is one of the first philosophical currents that emerged in the United States. It is therefore a key early point in the history of American philosophy. A core belief is the inherent goodness of people and nature, just hang on. Transcendentalism holds that while society and its institutions have corrupted the purity of the individual, people are at their best when truly self-reliant and independent. It is no accident that one of the crumbs in the trail left by 3301 was Emerson's 1841 essay, Self-Reliance, which opens with three epigraphs, I vatered them to you at the beginning of this video, from which as the purpose of this video is not a literary analysis, we can derive the three major themes of the work as a summary. 1. A Latin quote from Roman poet Perseus, born in the year 34, a time of adventure indeed, that means, do not seek outside yourself, or more simply, look within. 2. An epilogue from a 1647 play, The Honest Man's Fortune, man is his own star, you determine your own fate. And 3. Four lines by Emerson himself, in praise of the power and speed of being raised in the wild, free, literally, chuck the baby on the rocks, his mom better be a f***ing she-wolf, then chuck him in the snow with birds of prey and Cheshire cats and shit. That's how you make an American. Self-reliance, self-reliant individual, self-reliant society. But Emerson had a critic, a famous one, an American one. In 1846 essay, The Philosophy of Composition by, you might have heard of him, Edgar Allan Poe, Poe breaks down his theory on the process of creation of great art, of greatness in general, into three parts. One, keep it short. Great art should be consumed in a single sitting. The short story is superior to the novel. Two, on method, Poe denied intuition, denied that art or anything could be known a priori, that creating was methodical, not spontaneous. And three, what he called unity of effect, which is to say, don't start the story until you know how it will end. And to this specifically, Poe argued against Emerson that, quote, the death of a beautiful woman is unquestionably the most poetical topic in the world, and equally is it beyond doubt that the lips best suited for such topic are those of a bereaved lover. Some interpret this to mean that, quote, pure poetry can only be attained by the eradication of female beauty. Understandable for a man who had lost his mother, foster mother, then wife, and yet no one bought Poe's argument, not even in its time. T.S. Eliot wrote, quote, The result hardly does credit to the method. A fellow poet's way of saying, Bullshit, you're not spontaneous, and you know it. And it's possible he did. Some modern critics suspect Poe's essay is satire. Regardless, just three years later, Poe would be dead under circumstances as mysterious as his intent behind the philosophy of composition. Perhaps from alcoholism, though recent study suggests otherwise, or perhaps in the boiling political climate of 1849, an election year barely a decade before the Civil War would explode, he was a victim of something called cooping, kidnapped and beaten by roving gangs of political thugs in an effort to make a dissenter cast a fake vote. I'm not kidding. People suspected this as early as 1872, but that's not the point of this video, as fun a bit of American present, oops, I mean history as it is. The death of a beautiful woman, your poetry only by her eradication, your certainty of knowing how the story will end. This is an infinite loop, an infinite jest, an abyss that will stare back into you until it is your ending. But here Emerson doesn't care about women or beauty or endings at all. But if you listen, women, are irrelevant. Both sexes are irrelevant. The Transcendental Club founded by Emerson was described in its day as, quote, the occasional meetings of a changing body of liberal thinkers agreeing in nothing but their liberality. There was no club in the strict sense, only occasional meetings of like-minded men and women. It was sometimes referred to by the nickname, the Brotherhood of the Like-Minded. Beauty. To Emerson, self-reliance is beauty, not beautiful, beauty itself. 
unity of effect or knowing how the story will end. I am sorry, friend, but you don't. And you won't, because you can't. All I know is that I know nothing. And then, know thee sayaton. Know thyself. Same story, not nouns, verbs, things in motion, things alive, alive, and therefore sacred. This is the call. From the slop and shit of the ordinary world, the pugna porcorum, the pig war, of the monomyth, the one story, everywhere, in everything, you must wake up. The first chapter of 3301's first book, Liber Primus, which is preceded, by the way, in its own way, with an implicit warning that you are in this pig war, is called intus, reduced or thickened by boiling, like a sauce, literally concentrated by fire into the good stuff. Quote, the great journey toward the end of all things is not an easy trip, but for those who find their way here, it is a necessary one. Along the way you will find an end to all struggle and suffering, your innocence, your illusions, your certainty, and your reality. Ultimately, you will discover an end to self. It is through this pilgrimage that we shape ourselves and our realities. Journey deep within, and you will arrive outside. Like the instar, it is only through going within that we may emerge. Wisdom. You are a being unto yourself. You are a law unto yourself. Each intelligence is holy, for all that lives is holy. In instruction, command your own self. If we're being honest with ourselves, you do what you want, I'm gonna be honest with myself. There's a powerful emotion that wells up within us, in me, when I reflect on the call, on Emerson, on a cryptic, decade-old internet treasure hunt. And that emotion is cringe. Maybe it was that Socrates I tried to work in at the end. Maybe I was too effusive, I don't know. But I don't think I'm gonna keep going with these. I think I'm gonna quit. Gentlemen! <laughs> Fucking everybody, we the ever living out of everybody. We find every little bitch on the run, and we teach them all a lesson in American fun. Step two, we fucking everybody, we the ever living out of everybody. We find every 